there are no Africans in America. Not really. There are no Africans. There is a very, very, very small percentage of Africans. And the so-called real Africans look tribal. The Africans you see over, over in, in uh, so-called Africa today, the ones who call themselves African, a lot of them are not even really African. They came from elsewhere and migrated into Africa because you can truly tell who the native Africans are. You can tell who the tribal native Africans are. And most of the people there are not they, not them, the so-called black people there. A lot of these people who are coming into this country who uh, haven't even been here, they, you know, they can trace their um, trace their family back to England, Ireland, Scotland. I'm talking Caucasians. They now are just going to say, we just American. No more. And they just cut their past off because, see, they came here and they was living their best life. When they came over from wherever they came from, they was in hell. They was in poverty. And, they, and you know, they come over there nationally, ethnically, as Italians, as French, as German, as Irish, and all that, and they come and attach America to their name. But again, you have people here who are American. You already have a Native American people here, and I'm not talking about the Mongoloid Indians. I'm not talking about the Mongoloid Indians. You already have a people here who are Native already. So how are you just going to just come in here and say the hell with those people those are the real, no, you not, you want to say, you know, they're not the Americans. Like I said, we the Americans now. And again, you know how you know black, so-called black people are native to this country? Notice when we, when they start referring to us, they start referring to us as the American Negro in the 20th century. What is an American Negro? Now, question, if we come from Africa, why didn't they call us African Americans back then? They was calling the people, you know, back then from Europe, uh, uh, Indian American, I mean, uh, English, um, they call them, they call them uh, Irish Americans, German Americans, Italian Americans, Polish Americans. So they attached the American on, why not on ours? How would you just the American Negro? Think about it. Let's, let's, as they say, unpack that for a second. Let's look at that term and that phrase, American Negro. You American black person, a black person a Negro, a, an American black person. That's not saying where you come from. In other words, that's really saying that you are a person in America who is blacked out, who's blacklisted. You see, you are blacklisted people. Again, why are they referring to us as American Negro before they got with African American? Why did they call us that? If you know we came from Africa after slavery and all that, why wasn't we being called African American? You see, if they all wanted to stress that point, see, because they wasn't all the way over with the whole African story yet. You see, see they see they start they tried to erase our history in parts. You know, you always had some of these people who was talking about Africa, but for the most part. So-called black people here were considered Negroes, dead black people. In other words, people in darkness, people who have been blacklisted, people who have been wiped away from this society. And like I said, this is how you know we Native, because nobody else had hell put on them in this society like us. Nobody. They make sure they draw the racial line amongst our people. And again, if we really came from Africa, don't you think they would have deported us back to Africa? Why would they have to create a place? Think about this now. It's not, again, you know we're not Native Africans. Why would they have to create a place called Liberia for people who are Native? You mean to tell me y'all didn't have the slave um, records of where you took these people from? Why didn't you just deport them back to where you got them from? Why did you have to create a place in Africa called Liberia for the people who supposedly came from Africa? Shouldn't you know, you, since you claim you took us from the west coast of Africa, shouldn't you have just distributed us back to because? If you want to tell me you got the slave records and the slave ships, then you know where you took everybody from. Or you could at least drop people off in those areas. Why would you have to create a whole other place for Liberia to drop them off? Because they're not native there. You made that up. That whole, we come from Africa, like I said, that was a carryover or a continuation of when they tried to bring the tribal Africans here. And they see that didn't go well. That, well, that went left. You see, a couple of times, and they just stopped importing slaves around 1808. They stopped bringing Africans or uh, um, uh, um, they stopped bringing tribal Africans here. Some of them, they would just drop off in the West Indies, drop off in the place like Jamaica, the West Indies, things like that. 
and uh, uh, some in South America, but they wasn't dropping none off here in North America. They wasn't because they had the descendants of the Olmecs, the Aztec, the Inca, the Mayan, and all the civilized people over here on this side. They had them here. And like I said, we were already working. We already had land. We already was working land and farming land and living on land and building houses. We was already doing that here in America. So when the white man came, they took all that from us at gunpoint. They basically took everything that was ours and they put our people in slavery. That's how slavery got started in America. See, they want to sit up here and tell this lie. They brought everybody over here and put them on auction blocks and did all this. No, they got together. All these white, these Caucasians got together, got their gunpowder, got gunpowder together, got together and unified. Now people wasn't unified like that. Not really. We wasn't unified like that. And they just basically went about taking people's properties, the ones who lived in the South and things like that, the ones from the, who was in Mississippi, because our people was in Mississippi and Illinois and all kind of places like that, setting up mound places. That's how we got out there. And then when the Caucasians came out there, we, we was out there before them. And that's when they started that. That's when they so-called set up their uh, 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 law enforcement. And then the slave co co um, um, and then the slave plantations, basically by gunpoint. They forced people, because Jim Brown told, talked about that story, how, you know, because his people were from Gullah Island, and how these Caucasians were basically going around, like I said, in mobs and posses or groups and telling black people, you my slave now, come on, you could, let's go. Putting guns to them, and they was like, no, you have to kill us, we ain't working for you. So, again, if these people were getting slaves off of, from Africa, why are they going around forcing black people into bondage? You see, they want to hide this part of their history, how they forced children and to kidnap, kidnap um, teenagers and children, rape girls, all kind of stuff. This is how they got their slavery started. Hmm. This is really how slavery started. So once they did that, once they had that little thing where they got unified and they got on coat and they had weapons, then they got the so-called Indians, the Mongoloid Indians, who y'all want to, um, you so-called black Indians, want to align yourself with your so-called red Mongoloid brothers who are not your people, got with the white man to help put you in bondage. But let's not get it twisted. Like I said, the only real Americans, like I said before and I'll say it again, the only real Americans in this society are so-called black people. We're the only people who can call ourselves Americans. We're the only ones who are, by nationality, Americans. You can't just come into a country and then you come from somewhere else and then you decide to adopt or live in this country, so now I'm American now. It don't work like that. You see, this is why the white man wanted to come here and tell that lie. And when he came over here, it wasn't really nothing going on. And it was only some of these mongoloid Indians here. There wasn't nobody really here. And they just set up. That's a damn lie, man. That's a lie. There was always our people here. Our people were always here farming the land, working the land, living on the land for thousands of years and whatnot. Even when our societies and empires and things fell, that's what we were doing. That's what we were doing. You know what that would be like today? That would be like if America fell and the white man and the more separate start fighting against each other and then so-called um, black people, we came from some place else and we decide we're going to organize this thing and we're going to put the white people in slavery, you see, and have them whipping them and doing what we want. Like I said, then we're going to take on their name. Or if we did that in Italy somewhere, we went to Italy and decide we was going, ain't nobody, we're just going to take over and we're just going to run everything. You see, that's what I'm talking about. You already know the Italians is what they established to be. You can't, I can't go over there. I don't care if I live over there 100 years. I'm never going to be Italian. I don't care if I live in Italy for 100 years, 50 years, whatever. I will never be Italian. You see, I don't care if I live in England for whatever time. I'm never going to be England. English. Nobody's going to see me as English or German. I can't go over there and I, I'll never be German. I don't care if I live over there, you know, forever amongst them people. I'll never be called German because you already have the face of what a German, an Italian, a Frenchman, or whatever. You already have the face in your mind of how these people look. They're Caucasians. They're Europeans, you see. But strangely enough, 
The white man can go all in you so-called black people's country, and he can just usurp and become whatever it is that you're supposed to be. In other words, he takes your nationality, your identity for a joke. He'll go to damn Zimbabwe and whatnot, and, 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 and you know, he, he changed it. Before it was Zimbabwe, was Rhodesia. They just come in there and put their name on stuff. You see, then the, then the Zimbabwe's got some balls and ran them like they white asses up out of there. Like they should, like everybody should, all you so-called so-called pro-black Africans should have did with the white man. But a lot of y'all just as much as coons and sambos as these niggas over here, man. So I don't even know why why you niggas over here, you pan-Africans, look up to the so-called Africans. They're a bunch of coon-ass Negroes too over there. Coon-ass uh, 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 Africans. You see, they ain't standing up fighting for their head. They, they sitting around here trying to uh, uh, trying to uplift the damn Asians. And the Caucasian in their country, letting them lay with their women. You can't go over to their country and do none of that. You niggas want to claim African. Like that's something special to claim. No. Don't fall for the out of Africa theory that all so-called black people come out of Africa. That's a damn lie. Man. That's some lie from a Caucasian. And you've been taught those lies in school that we only stationed in one place. No. No. The face of America... Just like Europe, Europe, Caucasian, you know, are the face of Europe today, even though we were before before them. But let, but for all essential purposes now, Caucasians are the face of Europe. Asians are the face of Asia. Africans, you know, so-called black people, are the face of Africa. And copper-colored bronze people, meaning us, the copper-colored races are over here, we are American. We are American. You see, we are American. The copper colored races, you know, like I said, the black races would be your Africans, your tribal Africans. Those are your black races. That's their home, Africa. Right? We're not like them. We are the copper colored people here in the Americas. Americas is the home of the copper colored people. Here it is. They showed you again. Look at the definition. If you want, if you don't think what I'm saying is true, look at the definition of what an American is. Now, if the American, if that was supposed to be describing the Mongoloid Indians, which are not copper-colored people, they call it, they call the so-called American Indians redskins. Then they call them red. They didn't call them brown. The white man called them red man. Hell, they call themselves red men. They call them. They don't call themselves bronze or copper-colored. The white man and them, they call themselves red man, and they'll refer to you as a black man. Okay, so then who are these copper-colored people? Why, if these were the people that was being described in the Merriam-Webster. Uh, uh, um, definition of what an American is in, eight, uh, in 1828, if these are the people, then why didn't you just say the Native American Indians were the first ones to be um, considered American and then the Caucasians came? No, they specifically said the copper-colored races who are indigenous to this land are the real Americans. Everybody else after them just adopted that name. This is in the Merriam-Webster Dictionary. If, again, you need the so-called white man for validation, he tells you that, that this is the land of the copper-colored people. This is it right here. And the copper-colored people are not no mongoloid Indians. They're not no American Indians. That's not the copper-colored people. Those are the redskins. And why are they red? Because a lot of them got mixed in with the Caucasians who are red. Who are red. The white man's really red, a reddish pink. They are reddish pink. And you know, a lot of your so-called Mongoloid Indians got that reddish pink or reddish look because they got mixed in with them. Okay? They are not the copper-colored people that's described as the natives of this land. The natives of North America, South America, uh, uh, um, Canada, New Mexico, Mexico, New Mexico, all of that, that's all, that's all the Olmecs, the Aztec, the Inca, the Mayan. Those are the copper-colored people. And the copper-colored people go from the, um, the golden, yellowish, because you've seen pennies that's yellowish, kind of a yellowish tint, to a reddish-brown tint, reddish-bronze tint, to a dark, dark um, um, bronze tint. So that's like three shades of complexion of the, uh, of the uh, Americans of the true Americans, the Mesoamericans. That's three shades. A lot of times when you see your tribal Africans, they got that burnt black look to them. A lot of them got that burnt black look. A lot of them burn black in the sun over there in Africa. So you know who the Africans are. You know who the Africans are. So you got to keep that in mind. 
Africa is the home of the black people. Your tribal Africans are the black people. Your tribal Africans are the black people. Those are the blue black people, the, the dark skin, real burnt up looking people. The ones who burnt up from sunburn and everything, that's your black people. It has nothing to do with us. Nothing to do with us. That's the home of the Africans. You see? And now the white man and the Asian, because they let their ass in there. But, you know, traditionally, that's the home of the so-called black race, your so-called Africans. Okay? This a land of America is the home of the copper-colored people. The copper colored races. That's us. That is us. Europe, again, the home of the so called white man for now. Asia is the home of the Asians, the Chinese, the East Indians. That's all their land. These are all the same people. Again, your Caucasians, your Asians, your East Indians are all Asiatic people. We are not Asiatic people. We are not Asiatic people. We are American. We are American people. And, again, the word America comes from the Mayans, not from America over Spucci. That's a lie. And I told you, if that was true, then why don't we know anything about America over Spucci? How are you going to talk about the history of America, but you can't tell me about the history of the man who America was supposedly named after? There's no holiday for him. Why is that? Why do you celebrate Columbus Day and not America Vespucci Day, which the country is supposed to be named after? You know why? Because you know people will start to prod around and look, for, look into that story, and you will see that that's a lie. Because there's plenty of proof out there, documented proof in books, where they show you that Amerigo Vespucci, he changed his name to Amerigo, and the people was using that name, Amerikis, Ameri they were using that name already and start referring to themselves that way from the Mayans. The people were the descendants of the Mayans. And a lot of you so-called bronze, so-called black people here in America, y'all are of Mayan descent. You have Aztec descent, definitely of Olmec descent. You are of Toltec descent. Like I said, these represent different um, uh, um, um, governmental or different civilizations that lived here in the ancient Americas thousands of years ago. I tell you, go look up to those of you who doubt what I'm saying. Go look up their ancient uh, 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 ancient Americans, the ancient Americans are untold faces. I bet you you'll find, if you look up the ancient Mesoamerican faces, right, ancient black Mesoamericans, which is really all those faces of so-called black people. If you look that up, I guarantee you'll find your face. You so-called people who are falsely calling yourself African American. If you look up in those, look up in all those hundreds and hundreds of images, probably thousands of images of bronze people because you're talking about generations and generations that they try to hide here in the Mexican Museum, that they try to hide in the artifacts that they still got in the temples over there. You look all over, they got mounds and places here. Like I said, if you check all that out, I guarantee you, I guarantee you, you so-called black people, you will find where you belong. You will find your face. You will find your face amongst those people, the ancient Americans, the ancient Mesoamericans, and not amongst the so-called Africans. You see, the reason why I put Jesse, Jesse Owens up there, that's another thing, again, how you know that we are the real Americans. They could have got a so-called white man. Now, back in 1936, when Jesse Owens ran in the Olympics, right, they, America is racist as hell back then, still is, but it was racist as hell why would they get a so-called black man to run the Olympics to represent them? Because, again, sports is a very, very big thing to the so-called white man. He loves his sports. This is how he flexes it, or he tries to flex uh, um, physical superiority. This is how he judges who's more manly than one, really not by intelligence, but by physical abilities, physical capabilities. So you want to tell me, because I know how America, they, why wouldn't they get a so-called white man a white boy to go and represent them. Why would they get a so Why would they get a so-called white boy who was college run, young, younger than Jesse Owens? They could have got a so-called white boy, and even if they were lost, at least they could have maintained their whiteness. You see, but here it is: you went and got a so-called black man, let him wear USA on his shirt, United States of America. You let him put USA on his shirt, a so-called African from America. How, why wouldn't you get a so-called? Uh, uh, um, and y'all can see you getting an Indian first. This is the story y'all teach of a so-called Indian or just build up a white boy to run fast. And when they had white boys who could run back then, why you went and got a so-called black man? Number one, because he is fast. He was the fastest. But like white people are, they'd rather lose and have a Caucasian represent them than have a, and win than have a so-called black man. But they wanted to win because, again, 
they were, um, uh, you know, the Jews over here in this society, you know, they were anti-Nazism and anti-Hitler. And they, those who were the ones who controlled America, they wanted to show Hitler up because Hitler was talking all this stuff about how the Aryans were uh, um, superior and they the best athletes. So they wanted to show Hitler up. So what they do? They went and got a so-called black man. You know, I know as much as they hated that, they wouldn't got a so-called black man because they knew to go get a regular white man wasn't going to do it. So they had to make sure they got the real so-called American, the real American, the so-called black man to represent America. That's why they got Jesse Owens. And you could look in that picture and tell he wasn't even all that young. And say he didn't, at least he didn't look it. They ran out and got the so-called black man, you see. And he won all of those titles and stuff like that because, like I said, in all actuality, he's the only, he's the real American. They know that. That's the crazy. He's the real American. He's the real American. Jesse Owens is the real American. You see, so they had to put they wanted to put his face up there and make sure that when they put his face up there, they you know they could sit up and say, oh you know, they accomplished something. They did something by basically telling you the truth, which is that our people are the real natives of this land. Our people are the real natives of this land. They kind of tell you in, in, in roundabout ways, you see. Why they call jazz American music? Ask that question if it was created by people who are not American, because according to you know the so-called white man, we're not American. We're from Africa. So, you know, we didn't pick the company, so they always quick to tell us, that, you know, will not you go back to Africa? So then why is jazz, which is created by so-called black people, called American music if Americans didn't create it? <laughs> why, is, why is jazz called American music if Americans, because black people were not considered Americans, because if you was considered Americans, you could not be considered Americans under the government, under the white man, because they know the dangers of making our people or declaring our people American. That gives, they know potentially our people will come forward into power again like we once were. That's why I told you there would never be, they made sure they wanted to keep our people powerless. They got the memo a long time ago that they would never run a so-called black man for president. They're not doing that. They're not putting no so-called black man in power because it would be too reminiscent of the time where our people was in charge of this land before. They're not trying to see that happen. So they know just how easy it is for things to just change, people to come together, people to be inspired by that, people to will look and say, oh, you know, these so-called black people, they they Americans or whatever the case may be. And then they get a lot of these people, they, you know, notice they don't get you so-called black men to say, oh, you American, you an American, this, you American. They got to make you call yourself African-American. Why can't you just call yourself American? What right does the white man have to call himself American? How did he decide that he's an American? But you got to be an African American. He came, according to the story, he came from Europe just like you supposedly came from Africa, right? So what gives him the right to call himself American and get rid of his past? Why you got to be African American? Who decides that you are African? Why couldn't they just say you American? You've been here. You've been here. Well, the, and the truth be told, you was here way before they were. We was the first people here. So the first people that's in a land. The first people on the land, they are the natives of that land. So they would be, like I said, the Americans by by nationality, as the native people, we would be the Americans, the only Americans. The only Americans, the Mesoamericans. And again, the white man knew that these people were the first Americans here. That's why he, he you know, he applied that term Mesoamerican, <coughs> you know as the first or middle Americans, the first people of this land. You know, the, first, the very first people of this land, not the false people that they proclaimed that came from this land, like your so-called Mongoloid Indians, but the real people of this land that they don't want to tell you that you came from. Again, American is supposed to be synonymous with the so-called black man. Again, like Italian is synonymous with the white man, Irish, German, you know, Spanish, that's all synonymous. African is synonymous with the so-called black man, the tribal African. Obviously, that's synonymous. But when you start talking about our people out of the Africa and 
you know, and America and stuff like that, that's the home of the copper colored people. And just as Asia is the home of the uh, brown, the brown and, ye and yellowish people and the brown people, which are called Asians, that's their home. We have our own home. We have our own continent. And again, if we really were from the continent of Africa, the so-called continent, like I said, we would fit into that place. We would be hankering and clamoring to go back. But no, we good. We don't want to do that. We don't want to do that because we know better. A lot of our people know better. A lot of our people know better. And because a lot of our people know better, they're waking up hopefully to this message of who you truly are, who the real racial, what the real racial ethnicity of an American is, you looking at them, you so-called African-American. And like I said, they're supposed to be an American language. It goes with the Americans, the copper-colored people. Americans, the, American, the look of an American is a copper-colored, bronze-skinned, willow, willowy-head, uh, 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 um, Mesoamerican. That's the look of a Mesoamerican. You see? That's the look of a Mesoamerican. Not the not the Asians, not the East Indians, not the white man, not anybody but us, not the so-called African black Africans, because you could tell a white man would want to hurry up and group them in, group us all in together as one. You see, so he could always say, "Oh, you know, these slaves I got they from Africa, or whatever the case may be." Because I think about 1808, it was against the law to bring slaves or so-called Africans into America. They ain't want to do that no more. I know around 1808, they stopped that. You see, they didn't want to bring any more of you so -called Af the so-called Africans here anymore because of stuff like Amistad and all that and the Africans and, you know, being having to teach them and do what they had to do and try to get them to be, get them to be slave ready. That was a task within itself. All right. But like I said, this is the story that people, um, are sticking to. But we're going to shatter that story wide open. Again, we are the only American American nationals. We are. They don't want our people to know who they are, what they are, why they're here, what their true purpose is. Again, there's no coincidence that America is considered to be the staple of what people aspire to be because, again, people came over into America and renewed themselves. But, again, that's because the energy of the true Americans, the real Americans who have been prospering here, right, since the place was inhabitable, meaning our people, we were the ones that were prospering and doing the things here first. We were here first. We didn't come out of Africa. We are native to this land. We are native to this land, you see. The only land that your humans are really native to, especially the Caucasians, is to the caves. They're native to the caves, the Caucasus Mountains. That's what they're native to. That's their home. They were part of a creation. You know, we descended down, and we scattered out all over the planet, and we went to these different places, and we lived in these different places, and we thrived in these different places. We succeeded in these different places. Like I said, we really put it down strong here in America. This again, you can't have a great civilization that starts from nothing. All civilizations that are here were started first and foremost by our people, the copper colored people, the bronze people, the almond race, falsely being called African Americans, Negroes and black people. We are the ones who started all civilization on the planet going. And while y'all busy trying to give credit to the so-called white man, like I said, while we were starting civilizations here, he wasn't even thought of. And then when he was thought of, he was the last on the totem pole to come about at, as part of that creation. Right? And we were still in, in control and power when he was created and when he come out of the waters just like the rest of the uh, uh, humans. We were still in power. We were still in power while our people had this Frankenstein experiment going, creating a human race, we were still in power. And now our people have fell, fallen out of power and we forget who the true and living power is. 
a lot of people that's falling out of power. But like I said, everything comes to an end, and everything gets raised up again. That which is crushed to the ground will rise up again. That which was crushed to the ground, that which was denied that power to rule, and again, the biggest ones who denied who denied the power with our people, we denied ourselves of that power. You see, as the real Americans, you see, we denied ourselves that power as the real Americans. And now, like I said, we trying to reestablish ourselves in this land. We trying to reestablish ourselves in this land as a living power in this land. We're trying to raise ourselves as a living power in this land. You see, we're trying to revive ourselves as a living power in this land. And we cannot do it as so-called African-Americans, Negroes, and everything else we're telling ourselves that we are, or we allow people to tell us who we are. You see, I would tell our people just to use the term American, but we got too many people trying to, you know, use that term fraudulently. That's why we use the term Mesoamerican. Let it be known, yeah, our roots go all the way back to the Olmecs, to the Aztec, to the Inca, to the Mayan, the true natives of this land of America, of ancient America. We are the descendants of the ancient Americans. We are the descendants of the ancient Americans. We are not African. You see, we are the descendants of the ancient Americans, the first people to get civilization going forward, the, the creators and the makers of chocolate, the planters of maize, corn here, avocados all in this land. Again, we are the first ones to harness that power here in the society, built the greater societies and empires and things like that here in the society. We did that. So keep that in mind. Keep that in mind. Nobody did anything aid us in our ascension. But a lot of people did everything to help us in our fall from grace. But we built anyway regardless. And like I said, instead of us going and looking at the ancient ruins of Egypt, we need to look at the still standing structures, the cities and whatnot, of our people in Mexico, again, those cities were not built by Mexicans, or no ancient Mexicans. There's no such thing as an ancient Mexican. Those cities were not built by the so-called white man or the East Indian or the Asian. Those people, those those societies, those huge megalithic, as you say, societies were built by our people because this was their, you know, even the mounds, this was their ancient society. This was their America at that time. This was their America. This was their government. This was their society. This was their businesses. This was their, you know, way of life here in this land. And that was us back then. And we're still here today. You can find more people who look like the Olmec, the Inca, the Aztec, the Mayan, so-called black people. You can find people, like I said, I found my twin. You can find, and it didn't take me long to find them either. So that lets you know where we come from. That lets you know. That lets you know what we are part of. We have to stop allowing people to deny us and tell us that we're not part of this country. This is our country. Everybody else is a guest here. Y'all need to start thinking that way. Don't let the Pan-Africanists tell you, oh, America is not your country. It's the country of the white man. Well, you Pan-Africanists, what the hell do you think all them African countries are? The African countries now are the countries of the so-called white man. Who over there spending money? Who over there opening up their damn, uh, um, opening up their uh, uh, businesses and building railways and all this other stuff, adding to their economy, so-called white men and Asians. A lot of your so-called corrupt African leaders are cutting deals with these Asians and Caucasians, okay? They're cutting deals with these people, just so you know. They're cutting deals with these people just so they can be in charge. Just so these people can be in charge, be the puppets, right? And a lot of you Negroes over here, you do the same thing. You make the deal with the white men to deceive our people and whatnot, and let our, not letting our people know we are the real Native Americans. Why ain't none of these black scholars speaking up? Why ain't none of these black Pan-African scholars speaking up? Answer, because they Pan-Africanists. 
if they speak up and tell the truth about our people, the ancient Americans here, like I said, they're going to make some Caucasian Zionists or some Caucasians, period. They're going to make them really angry. And that funding might not come through or that tenure at that university might not come through as a college professor teaching African-American studies might not come through if they start telling the truth about who our people really are in the society. See, that ain't going to come through. Because I'm like, why ain't none of these people said anything about our people being the ancient Americans? Why haven't they said anything? For the exact reason why I just told you, why they keep their mouths shut. They want to keep getting that check. We as the real Americans, the only Americans, we use that term Native American just to distance ourselves and let it be known that, yes, we do know we are the ancient Americans here. Yes, we do know that. So we use that terminology, but in all reality, we are the only Americans here. We are the Americans. All right. And like I said, don't let these people try to make you think that American is something bad or that's synonymous with the white man. Like, I don't like when you got these Israelites and all these people. They try to make it seem like, I hate when they try to make modern-day America synonymous, the white man synonymous with the pharaohs in Egypt. Right? I don't like when they do that, you see. I hate when they try to make them synonymous with the pharaohs in Egypt because, you know, you give these people license to steal our history because that's our people over there in the ancient world and ancient Egypt as well. It's like you give these people license, these Caucasians license to steal our heritage. These stupid Israelites want to say, oh, those, you know, y'all all, y'all, man, you want to try to hand, not only do you hand over our heritage to the so-called Mongoloid Indians, but then you hand over our ancient Egyptian heritage to the so-called uh, uh, tribal uh, Africans, which they were not the ancient Egyptians. Y'all need to stop lying. They are not the Nilotic people, whatever you call them. They are not those two. You can clearly see on the walls in ancient Egypt that the ancient Egyptians are not tribal Africans. They're more Mesoamerican than anything. They're more Mesoamerican. And like I said, I make the link between Mesoamerican and ancient e Mesoamerican, ancient Egypt, or Kemet, because you see the wall drawings and all that's the same, all the architecture and all that's the same. So obviously they have to be related. Obviously they have to be related. You see, like I said you could tell with the biggest, like on this side, you see the biggest pyramids and everything in the most elaborate cities more so than in ancient Egypt. Uh, you see the more elaborate cities and building structures and the you know, way of life and you know, in uh ancient Mesoamerica. So we have to, like I said, embrace that as our true culture, as our true heritage, as our true identity as a, as Americans. The word American is supposed to have a very special connection with us. Like I said, it really has no connection with the so-called white man. They tell you in the Marion Webster, again, dictionary, that these people just hijack that term. Like the white man does, he, he steals, the, the so-called white man, he steals uh, uh, symbols and terminologies and things like that. He steals them, he covers them for himself, and then he acts like, you know, those are his symbols, those are his names, that's what it's, you know, and he tries to act like, he don't took it from you and try to act like you trying to copy him. Like I said, when we we talk about the serpent and the rainbow and the diamond and all that, those are all ancient ancient uh, uh, Mesoamerican symbols. Those are all ancient Mesoamerican symbols. The serpent, the diamond, all the stuff Superman used, the colors, red, blue, and yellow, white in there. Those are all ancient Mesoamerican symbols. Okay? Those did not come from Caucasians. So, like I said, they'll take our heritage, they'll take our symbols and put it, and, and, and put themselves in, drape themselves in, and the next thing you know, you accepted them as the real Native people. Same way they went, because I told you, everybody loves to steal from our heritage and our culture and leave us with nothing. They love to tell this lie that we came away with nothing. This is how much they hate our people. This is how much they're jealous of our people, that they willing to steal our heritage, lie about our heritage. And any one of you Caucasians who come out here and tell the truth, like the guy who wrote the book, The uh, Unexpected Faces in Ancient America, or I forget what the name of the title is, Unexpected Faces, who showed all those pictures, I'm pretty sure he pushed, he pissed off a lot of Caucasians. He pissed off a lot of Caucasians. 
you see, who 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 have already done uh, uh, got their out of Africa theory, and that that's where our people come from. So then, when you show these people these faces who are not supposed to have been here at that time in this land, people who are clearly not African, people who clearly look like the so-called black people here in America today, the American so-called black people, the ancient Americans clearly look like these people of today. That shows you our descendancy. That shows you our descendancy. Those people, those ancient statues and things like that, the Mesoamericans, the Olmec, the Aztec, the Inca, the Mayan, Tolta, they don't look like the so-called Asians. You, you'll see some of them Asians who start to come amongst our people. And like I said, they were treated as outcasts. A lot of them were put in jail and were arrested by our people. Okay. But then like anything, they try, they start infiltrating our societies. They started infiltrating and coming in, and next thing you know, they mix in with the people, right? Mixing they see, and now next thing you know, now you see, uh, by the time the white man get, he see brown skin, Asian slash black, so called black slash uh, <coughs> copper colored uh, um, people. He sees our people, and the Mongoloids are here side by side with them. You see, but they can clearly see the so-called Negro features in the Mongoloids and whatnot, and that these are nothing but crossbreeds. You see, you'll see them as nothing but crossbreeds. So that tells you right there. That tells you right there who our people are and what blood was in this land first, what people were in this land first. Like I said, it scared the hell out of me when I found that ancient Mesoamerican warrior with my face. That's more. That's not a coincidence. My, and on that video, I still have not. Where well, I put my face next to the ancient Mesoamerican warrior that statues in Mexico, I put my face next to that ancient Mesoamerican. I haven't heard anything from you people in the comment section that's proven me. You, you so-called Mexicans, you Latin, Latinx, you trying real hard to put your face amongst the old Mex and the Aztec and the Inca and the Maya, and it's not working. It's not working. Too many of our people are starting to wake up. You keep trying to take our history. You keep trying to force yourself into our history. And, and when you, like I said, you're complicit with the white man. You keep trying to call yourself Native Americans and all this other stuff. You're not the Native Americans. And if you were the Native Americans, why, do, why is the white man covered in your name as American? And question, if you guys are Native American, right, what does American mean? Where is, where is American in your language? Where does your language come from? All of that so-called hand-me-down Native American, American Indian languages from the uh, Mesoamericans. That's all Mesoamerican language. Because the only thing those people came over here speaking was some kind of Asian, uh, Chinese, or whatever they spoke, some Asian language. They didn't come over here with no, uh, um, with no uh, 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 Native American language or tongue or nothing like that. Their native tongue is some kind of Chinese or wherever they come from in Asia, that's their native tongue. I want you to tell me, like, ask, ask some of the so-called American Indians who in this tribe and that tribe, where do they descend from and what is their first language? And what does, and what does, and who, and, you know, all these things you should be able to ask them. I bet you they can't answer you or they don't want to answer you because then you start getting into the reality of who they are and who we are. You see, so what they've done is become complicit with the so-called white man, the caveman, and stealing our heritage, stealing our heritage, stealing our title of American, taking it. Because like I said, that, that shows you the power of the word American. That shows you, right, why would you trade in your Italian, French, Irish, all that? Why would you trade that in and want to attach American on it? And that, again, is from our language. So obviously the Mayan language, which produced the word America, had to be a beautiful language, a strong and powerful language for these people to want to take our names, take our nationality, our identity, you see. And here's another thing nobody thought about. Here's another thing. This is a contradiction. If this land was named after Amerigo Vespucci, right, the Italian, whatever he was, explorer, whatever, if this land was named after Amerigo Vespucci, then why did Marion Webster say that the land was originally named after the copper-colored races that were here in this land? Why does that say that? 
Why does it say the America, the name America? It doesn't say this name was originally from Amerigo Vespucci. It doesn't say that in the 1828 definition. Now, wouldn't they know that right then and there? That, that, that's, that's close up history right there. That's closer than where we are now. Wouldn't they have said back then this name, America, derives from Amerigo Vespucci, and, you know, he was the first Caucasian to, to give this name America, which can't be because if that was the case, why would you attach the word a name America onto the native people here if it didn't come from the native people? If the word itself didn't come from the native people, why would you attach it to the people and say they're the real Americans? Tell me, do that make sense? Am I just crazy or do that, does that not make sense? You see? Why would you say that these people are the copper-colored people are the Native Americans. Why would you say that but then not name America Vespucci as the one who came with that? Does that even make sense? Then why would you say that the Europeans took that name later if America Vespucci, the name came from a white man, the so-called European first? Why would you say that? Tell me, does that make sense? Please tell me, does that make sense? So that, that means that that cannot be, it cannot, according to the Merriam-Webster uh, definition, the word American can't come from a Caucasian. That can't come from a white person. Because it would have stipulated that this name came from a white man named Amerigo, and then later on, the, then, then, the, then the people, um, um, the so-called Native Americans, we attached to them, but then the Caucasians, they would have to say that about the origin of the word. You see? Again, like I said, a lot of people are telling lies, man. A lot of things don't make sense. A lot of things y'all accepting as true in reality don't add up to that. I'm sorry. It just don't add up to it. Y'all got to face that and accept it. Right? A lot of it don't add up to it. So we got to wake up to that. We got to wake up to the fact that we are the only real people, the only national people the only national Americans by nationality. We are the only Americans by nationality. You see? All right. We're the only ones. Okay. So keep that in mind. Our people need to know this, like I said, because if we're going to sit here and we're going to teach our children anything going forward in the future, we must let them know that you come from the founders of this society. You are the first people. You are the descendants of the first civilization of people here in this country. And like I said, don't let them tell you it's some tribal thing or whatnot because they already showed you how intricate our people were in the ancient world. They showed you how intricate they were, how masterful they were, how strong they were. Again, this shows you right here. They wasn't up here telling you about anybody else. It was way before the white man was even thought of way before he was thought of, right, way before he was even a consideration. Our people were here in this land, utilizing this land, growing food on this land, living on this land. We were fighting each other in this land. We was doing all that. We was doing all that. But, see, tr traditional, tr traditional belief tells you that all black people came out of Africa. You can't be no place other than Africa. Unless somebody brought you there, do you understand the insult to our people who were sea uh, sea uh, sea exploration people? We would we would jump on ships and boats and whatnot and go and and travel over to this side and go see what's going on over here, travel to another country and whatever the case. And we would do stuff like that. We would just do stuff. We had people that we, we would do things like that. Just go traveling. Ain't nothing else to do. Ain't no damn club nowhere. Whatever the case is, they go out traveling. I'm pretty sure they had clubs back then. They had their own music, and it sounded like soul music back then. But like I said, they traveled. They checked out different places. They visited certain places, the same way you do now. Because we got to stop thinking. So like I said, our people went on vacation. We went to places. We got on boats and went to other countries and stuff and vacation. There was, that ain't nothing new. You see? We got on boats and went over to other countries and stuff like that. And, vacationed over there, you know, went to other places. They want to act like the white man was the first one to start going on vacation and traveling places. Yeah. You see? So keep that in mind. Okay? 
So, so keep that, you know, like I said, when this is why it's important, why we had to set up the Mesoamerican community, this is why it was important for, for in setting up the Mesoamerican community that we let our people know who are still under this whole lie of being African Americans that we are actually the Native Americans of this land, the Mesoamericans of this land, and that this is our land here, and we need to stop acting as though we are guests in our own home. You see, that should make you extra angry when some when some damn Caucasian tell you you need to go back to Africa. That should make you extra angry. That should make you really want to put a foot in their ass. This is our land. This is our home, Mississippi. Illinois, and notice the very place, because they had a lot of mounds in Mississippi, a lot of mounds where our people lived, the ancient people lived. They called our people the Mississippians because those were descendants of the Mayan people, the Aztec. These were descendants. We had mound cities built over there in Los Angeles, California, and Illinois, and Mississippi. Like I said, vast ones. And then they had another white man coming over there and whatnot. And like I said, they started going into the temples, and Mississippi and stealing stuff out of there. They stole a lot of stuff out of the temples of our people in the ancient world. They stole a lot of our people's stuff, man. They stole a lot of stuff. And so, and they, and like I said, they ain't above stealing our heritage. They ain't above lying right in our face and telling us, oh, no, you guys are not the Native American. No, damn well we are. They'll see proof of it and then turn around, oh, no, you got our face would be on the damn wall. Oh, no, see, that's not you guys. You know, see, they really don't look. That white man got always got a patent lie. He's always got a patented lie to uh, to get out of telling the truth. All right? He always got a patent lie. Yeah. So don't accept nothing he says. All right? Don't accept nothing he says. Okay? We have to wake up as a people. And like I said, again, those of you who are watching these videos and looking at these videos on the Mesoamerican channel, join the, join the Mesoamerican community. Join the Mesoamerican community. Type in the Mesoamerican community.com and you'll see our community come up because we are opening the, the doors for those of you who want to come in and be a real community, a real Mesoamerican community. Those of you who are members, those of you who are in the Republic of Mental, like we are all, it's all an extension of Mesoamerican and Italian Mesoamericans. So those of you who are here in the Mesoamerican community, go out and get other like-minded people, bring them home. We need all the like-minds of people who think on this level of community coming together, your family members, your brothers, your sisters, your aunts, whoever, who think on this level, who, who, um, who, uh, res who this message resonates with the reality of our people. You see, this is what we have to spread this to. You see, the reality of our people, who we really are, where we're heading, what direction we're going in. So we have to be real about who and what we are and what our purpose is in the world. 